Wrestling back with another episode of Talking Sauce. Today, I'm joined by Sean Donovan. Sean, Hello, sir. thanks for ha- thanks for uh, joining us. Sure. It's not the first time we've uh, no, all sat not. next to one another. No, man. A couple years ago, I was putting myself over for about three hours. That's, it might be the longest one. No, Moff. Moff's definitely got to be. <laughs> but we all know Moff looks, likes to talk. Moff loves to go long. Absolutely. Kevin, you know about that, right? <laughs> but uh, always love having you on the show. Don't like these guys, but whatever. Fuck them. Who are these guys? Uh, uh, oh, the people man. in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck off. All right, man. All right, it's yeah. fine. Let's start this off with Los Calientes. This is a five out of ten on the heat level. Los Calientes. That's right. You like my Spanish? It's, it's nice. Yeah. It's a nice Spanish right there. My girlfriend's not Spanish. She's Italian, but she's Spanish by injection. Previous relationships. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. okay. <laughs> I was like, yeah. What are you is, is, is there anything off limits on this show? Absolutely you know not. from last time. Absolutely I'm just... not. There's nothing <laughs> off limits. Hop in there and grab this fucking soaked up nugget. It smells delicious. Oh my goodness. Let me put this cup on the ground so it doesn't blow away. Actually, I'm not the one that came up with that. My girlfriend said that to me. <laughs> We were having a conversation about how great of a cook she is, and she cooks really great Spanish food. And I said, I didn't know how to cook Spanish food when I first met her. And that was her response. That's a fair response. Yeah, I think so. Do you like in the sauce? Yeah, I, you know, I'm a fan of spicy food a lot. Oh, good. And uh, the spicier the better. This is pretty good. It's comfortable. It's comfortable. This is this is my second favorite. Cause, you know, I, like, okay. I like to get kicked in the face a little bit. <laughs> so, <laughs> talking about getting kicked in the face. You've been doing this wrestling shit for a long time, but I feel like lately you are finally reaching that prime of your career and yeah. you are like a master of your craft at this point. How do you feel that your career has had some peaks and valleys and now you're finally reaching like where you're supposed to be? Um, you know, it's funny. It's it, I've always said, uh, even to younger students, it's about... The journey, it's not about the destination. Um, and it's funny, when I when I look at how things are evolving now with the business, um, and it's such a new time. Styles are changing, it's very flashy, it's very acrobatic, and I take absolutely nothing away from the performers of this generation now that are doing some incredible things. I wish I could do those things, my body just does not bend like that. Yeah. So I stick to what's in my wheelhouse, I stick to what I grew up loving and that's that old school style of wrestling that I think I've truly been able to perfect in an era now that you really don't see and it helps me stand out from everybody um, and just everything that I, I feel like I, I learned coming full circle from all of these old school veterans and, and the people that I had a chance to grow up um, uh, idolizing and getting a chance to work with them and soak up that knowledge. I, I think when I look at those peaks and valleys, there's a reason why I'm still doing this now at such a high level. Sure. Um, when I look at performers of my generation, when I first came into the business in 2001, there's a very, very small handful of, of performers that are performing at the level that I'm performing at, still doing this. Uh, and I don't mean that with any type of a, type of a knock. It, it, to me, it shows that I still have passion, I still have creativity, uh, and I still have just a pure love for wanting to do this. And I don't plan on giving up until I take that one last month that my body says, it's time to hang it up. So. When I see those peaks and valleys, I'm in a lot of ways, I'm very humbled by what I've been through. Um, it's shaped who I am and it's shaped the performer that I am today. You've been doing this for how long now? November 25th of this year. Here was the 19th anniversary of my first match. Um, May of 2001 was when I started training. So come May 2021 will be 20 years since I first took a bump. That is fucking wild. <laughs> I, think I hear I that number, I, and I'm just like, yeah. wow. I, I think I might actually be like Danny Moff. I might be getting younger while I'm getting better. <laughs> it's it's actually really impressive, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, We're going number two? Number two. What do we well, got? you are going to be going number two, I promise. You. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Bull Hot Sauce. This was bought by... Am I going to be taking a bowl Brittany? size number two when this happens? Not from this sauce. No? But okay. <laughs> something, right. something after this is going to... It's like the bowl of the woods. All right. 
What do we got here? It's just delicious. This is what you get on football Sunday. Get a little. Mm. I gotta, I gotta give a, a thumbs up and credit to you guys. You guys really went all out with the Nuggets. Oh, you know, like we we have a huge budget. I know. So uh, that's we amazing. Got those McDonald's Nuggets, you know, big time hey, budget. You stuff ain't cheap. Look at the pandemic today. Everybody's raising their prices. So, kudos to you guys for not. Can I tell you what a, a, a forty piece? Thousand. Yeah, it's thirteen dollars. It's not bad. You could probably get 120 pieces from Costco and just fry them up yourself. But if you really want to be a budget saver, I mean, and this is that old school mentality of me coming in. I had to save a buck. Hey, listen, <laughs> this, it might need to happen. I've been, I'm doing like three a day now. Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> it's actually pretty funny. When I, my girlfriend talked about going on vacations, I suggested like a simple like days in hotel. And she's like, I don't want any of that wrestler bullshit. <laughs> she goes, I'm going on vacation. I'm going somewhere nice. We're not staying in a wrestler hotel. <laughs> Dude, I, I feel like I, I basically have the wrestler mentality and saving money too because I do the same shit. I'm just like, yeah, let's stay at this place. It's right by. It's like the exact yeah. same location. What I, are we doing? You no, know, well, that's that's you know, my girlfriend's like, no, I want to stay at a nice resort on the beach. I'm like, but if you stay at a Days in a block earlier, or, I'm sorry, a block away, you could save yourself like 120 bucks a night. That's right. But you know, not getting away with that one. So, but that's what, okay. That's speaking okay. of like. Like wrestler mentality on mm -hmm. saving money. Yep. What have been some of your favorite trips that you've had in wrestling? I know we've talked about it in the past with yeah. the, the Chipsy story <laughs> and all that. <laughs> Those tell, of you that want to know the, the Chipsy that, story, you can go back to uh, conversations on GoPro and hear that story. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think some of the, the, the most fun things in, in wrestling is stuff that just happens organically, like the Chipsy story. It was just, it was, you know, organic. But I, I think, you know, some of my favorite stories is is just being in a hotel room with a bunch of guys that have the same passion, the same drive, and just silliness ensues from guys who are having a snoring contest when they're sleeping and you can't <laughs> sleep. And I, this is actually one story is kind of funny too. The the uh, I believe it was I can't remember if it it was the second Wrestle Pro Alaska trip. So I'm rooming with uh, Falaba. Justin Carino and Danny Moff. Fala, we all know, I've heard stories, he sleeps anywhere. He'll sleep on the floor, he'll sleep on a sidewalk, it doesn't really matter. But him and Danny Moff, they snore so loud. You, it's, it's one of those things where you just can't sleep. It's like a baby crying. You ah, can't sleep. Lovely. So I got Fala in a cot because there's not enough room for all of us. We're not small people. <laughs> yeah. Fala's got a cot that he can barely even fit on himself. And it's wedged in between the doorway to get in because the sink is right up against when you walk in. So that you can't even escape the room. So this is about four in the morning. They're snoring at all time highs. I can't sleep. So I said, fuck this. I got up at four in the morning, got dressed, found a way like to slide out of the room to go work out at four in the morning. I took like a $30 Uber to the gym because it was that far away. It's like 10 degrees outside, but the real feels like negative 10 to go work out in Alaska because I can't sleep. They wake up, they text me, oh, Dipsy, where'd you go? You lost? I said, no, I'm working out. I said, I can't stand you guys. You fucking <laughs> snore and I can't get a good night's sleep. They're like, oh, it's not our fault. And I'm like, yeah, it is. One of you have fucking sleep apnea, bring your mask. <laughs> Like, there's a reason if you have health issues like that, where the fuck This might be mask? me, huh? This might be a story about like, me, huh? <laughs> but, I mean, I have stories that can... I, I actually was was uh, texting with uh, with uh, Bear Bronson, and I we were just laughing about um, uh, old-school carny promoters, and I just I said, I have stories for days. Oh. I could write multiple books. We'll save that for the next one. That's fine. I'm, I'm going to hit you for one of those. Yeah, that be, might be your new series. Story, stories with vets. Stories with vets about carnies. Those, <laughs> those are the best kinds of stories. <laughs> oh, trust me, I could tell stuff that would probably make your skin crawl. I love that. I love that idea. Yes. So th this next one is Community Gardens Small Axe Peppers Habanero Mango Hot Sauce. And it's a four. That's the, that's the title? It's a long ass Good title. Lord Almighty. That's like promotions that have like five names. It's like Northeast Pacific Championship let's, Wrestling let's Alliance. Jesus. It should just be Sap. Habanero mango sauce. Like, let's go. <laughs> we got places to be. Fuck. So, when are you guys getting a title belt made for this gimmick? Ooh, man. It might be a low budget title belt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
It's gonna be like what was that paper fucking, mache? Like used to as a kid, used to take the, the cardboard. No, remember the fucking WWE tag team titles that they had for a little bit? Like the fucking <laughs> the old school county. ones. No, like, oh. this was like two years ago. Fucking oh, heavy Jesus. machinery one. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> From some job. I'm talking like the old paper mache. My parents used to buy me like hordes of like the the big cardboard construction paper you would buy for school. That's what we can afford yeah. on this show. So all right, it's cool. Great. <laughs> I'll supply the uh, masking tape for you guys to put oh, the uh, notches on. That'd be great. You're saving a lot of money, man. <laughs> Fuck. All right. All right, let's try this Ooh, one. Nicely fucking dipped in there, baby. Let's go. Oh. Mm. Get my hands on. I can get my hands on this damn thing. This is the most delicious sauce of my entire life. Mm. It's got a sweet flavor to it. This is the also. Hit your tongue. This is provided by Brittany as well. All right, well. Good shit, Brittany. This is a monster of a sauce. Oh, fucking delicious. Yeah, you're a fan. I know. I am a fan. It's yeah. great. So, I need to hear more about these fucking... What? I think that just went right over Frank's head. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I literally was like, oh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. I, that just hit me now. <laughs> High five. <laughs> yeah, it literally went right over my fucking head. Wow. I mean, your head's giant. Dude. I know. It, really it takes a while to get over. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so what's next? What's next on the I, questions? I need list? to I need to hear about these carny stories. Hit me with your best carny story. You can leave names out if you want, but if you if you want to um, leave it in, please by all means. Okay, so uh, it's not really the best story, but there's some. So along the Northeast, there used to be what was called. There used to be so many affiliations of the NWA. So there was NWA New Jersey that I started was actually the first independent company I started working for, outside of my old school. And uh, started off doing battle royals, you know, getting paid legitimately, you know, handshake and a hot dog is that's where it comes from. Was it good hot dogs at least? Uh, yeah, I think they were like uh, they were like Nathan's or something like that. So you know, they really they really sprung for the good stuff Absolutely. for you know the the uh, the concessions. But uh, <laughs> you know, eventually I worked my way up to those ten dollar paydays and things of that nature. And that's just you know that's that's how you come along and pay your dues in the business. But um, the promotion was run by two old school carny promoters. Named Dapper Johnny and Gino Moore. If anybody doesn't know them, just type in on Google, look them up. Um, you know, they were they were notorious for doing the ticket seller battle royals, and that that way they would get their budgets up and things of that nature. But um, kind of coincides two things. So you know, funny story is that I, I actually just put up a post the other the other day on on my uh, Instagram about like you know the the generations of performers they will never understand having to keep CDs and. You know, I used to keep multiple versions because in case you gave the promoter a CD and it was scratched, uh. you got to have another one on <laughs> hand. So Gino Moore, who was one of the owners and the guy who did the music, was notorious when you would go get your music at the end of the night. You know, he had this nasally voice like, oh, brother, it must have gotten mixed up somewhere. I'll get that CD back to you at the next show. You'd see Gino coming in with like five crates of CDs and there's only ten matches on the show. So... Gino would kind of legit, you know, take people's music and like he'd just have like generic music for people like yeah. if they forgot their music and he wouldn't know what the songs were and sometimes performers would come out to the same music uh, on shows and it was just, but uh, the ultimate, <clears throat> and this is more for people in the Northeast, there is a Gino Moore uh, sex tape that has made its way around. I've seen it once and I want my own copy. <laughs> <laughs> it is like the greatest, like worst thing you will ever see in your life. Picture Jabba the Hutt in, in like a a, a, a voyeuristic, uh, homemade sex tape type scene. And you're telling me this is worse than that that picture that you showed me of what the fuck's his name from uh, what was that that WWE team? You know what I'm talking about the the asshole picture. Oh, the Brian Knobs. Yes. The, the, yes. Uh, nothing really beats that one, but this is pretty close too because it's actual video. Top notch. Yes. So, uh, like, and if anybody wants to me. understand, just Google Gino Moore NWA New Jersey, and you'll see what he looks like. And then from there, picture that scene that I've just given you in such <laughs> cinematic excellence. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I don't know so if that, I want to Google it, but I'm probably going to Google was, it. That was the start of uh, a lot of my journeys. I didn't know, and the reason why this came about was because for years I never knew Gino Moore actually wrestled. 
and then videos appeared on YouTube of him actually wrestling. So that led to me seeing this and some of the greatest footage that will scar me for the rest of my life. So yeah, uh, but I've got like I said, I've got plenty of fun fun stories of, of carny promoters for days on end. We're gonna probably have to start this series going then. I think so. It'd be We're great. And there's so many still. There's so many so many events around that can tell stories. Like Steve Max got those. some good stories from. Back in the day, a Jersey All Pro, Mop's got great stories that he's told me. I'm and, sure Jersey All Pro stories. Oh, it'd be, they'd be great. There's there's so much footage out there. Just make sure I get 10 percent of whatever oh, absolutely, benefits absolutely. and uh, sales you guys. 10 percent of zero is is a that's good totally cool. <laughs> Works for me. All right. You can pay me in chicken nuggets. So instead of handshakes oh. and hot dogs, it's well, I got you. Chicken nuggets and uh, I'm here for nuggets all day, man. So what do we? Uh, this is the Carolina Reaper, and uh, we know how much uh, Thief loves the Reaper. He actually fucking drank this. So good luck to him. Uh, this is 2.1 million Scoville on the heat index. I don't even know how to spell that. Scoville? Yeah. Oh, that's some dude's like last name. And I guess he decided to fucking name the shafter him. So Jesus. he's putting himself over, you know? Like that time he did security for Sting in the uh, playroom. <laughs> <laughs> I've served your coffee. Now book me, brother. I deserve that title opportunity. It's all in good fun, man. People just have to laugh. Can't take the business so seriously. That's, That's right. The, the one thing I think. Do you, do you encounter that a lot when you meet a lot of performers at events? Do you see so guys are more so having fun or guys that just take this way too seriously? It's literally split down the fucking middle. And, like, the ones that obviously, like, we like hanging around with more are the ones who are, like... You, you could tell, like, they work really hard and they're passionate, but, like, right. they're there because, like, they love wrestling right. and it's, like, fun to them. Yeah. And if you're not there to, like, have fun, like, yeah, sure, you can, you can take it super fucking serious and, like, all that shit, and you'll probably do well. But, like, at the end of the day, wrestling is entertainment, and yeah. if you're not an entertaining person... I agree. Like, I mean, there's nothing wrong. There's, there's a way to take the business seriously in terms of your passion behind it and your creativity and what you want to do and what you want to create. But don't take it so seriously that you you kind of soak the, or suck the fun out of it for yeah. yourself, and then uh, when you get around others, it sucks the fun out of out of them too. And again, I think we're all at that point somewhere in our lives. I know I was at that point very early on in my career because I was just going through the motions and trying to figure out my way around the business. Yeah. Um, the problem is you don't have at a lot of schools you don't have the knowledge of, of guys that are veterans nowadays to teach you to not take it so seriously. Because when I came into the business, you still had those guys from the that I was taught from the 90s and 80s that, you know, they would teach you a little bit, but they wouldn't teach you a lot because they were afraid that if they taught you too much, you'd get too good and you'd take their spot. That, that and, actually leads me to a question. Like, so you... You were trained by more by like guys who are just like on their way out, right? Yeah. So I was trained by a journeyman, a number of journeymen um, that were kind of big in their time around the Indies. A uh, guy by the name of, who taught me the basics, was a guy by the name of Kevin Knight. Okay. Um, yeah. Biggie Biggs, uh, who I consider a mentor and a friend this day. And another guy by the name of Dr. Hertz. Uh, to me, one of, the, okay. uh, one of the best talkers in all of indie wrestling. Um, you know, they were kind of on their way out. Biggie Biggs was still around and Kevin Knight was still around. Uh, Dr. Hertz was kind of in and out, but I got a chance to be in locker rooms and learn from a lot of the old school guys, like uh, Chris Candido and Balls Mahoney used to come up to uh, our school and used to get in the ring and, and just spend a lot of time talking to us. So guys like that that had a history and had knowledge of the business, I got a chance to learn from those guys, and some of them were really giving, but then you would get into locker rooms with other veterans that were kind of not necessarily huge names, they were territorial names. Okay. Um, and they would want to give you a little bit of knowledge, but they wouldn't want to give you at all. But yet, I didn't understand that mentality. They w didn't want to lose their spot, but they were kind of on their way out anyway. So it's you know, kind of like a double negative in a yeah. way. So, you know, it is what it is. Today, I, I, I have no problem wanting to help. That was going to be my, my other question. Like, so you were taught by guys who were like basically on their way out, but like now, like the school at WrestlePro is being taught by guys who are like currently in the business right. do you feel like there's a huge difference between like guys who are currently in this generation wrestling now and they know what it's actually like right now versus guys who are old school guys who like 
wrestled in the 80s and 90s and don't know what this generation's locker room is like. You need to know the, the yeah, culture. Yeah, I think, I think it's it's 50-50, but I, I do think that when you have guys that are currently doing this, that have been doing it for a long time, myself, guys like, you know, I, I'll use Danny Moff as the first name that comes to my head too, where he learned from that old school, the negative and the positive ways, and then you bring that to today where you can completely make it a positive. Because you, you can't put today's generation through what we went through. Mm -hmm. um, it's a different time in the business and it's a different mentality, but I do think that small pieces of it still need to be there in order to help this generation today fully appreciate and understand the opportunity they're being given. Um, you know, you have a lot of schools that are doing it right, but you also have a lot of schools that are not doing it right. right. And it makes it too easy for people to get into the business today. And while everyone would like to be involved in the business, it takes a certain mental, physical aptitude to actually get into the business and really want to do it at a high level. Yeah. And I think by pay, still being able to pay certain dues, if you want to call it, that helps you appreciate and respect the business a little bit more. The, the opportunities that I've been given recently makes me appreciate where I came from. Uh, it makes me appreciate that I was taught the fundamentals and the basics correctly. It makes me appreciate that the advice that I was given early on still holds up to this day. So I think some of the generation today still could benefit from a lot of that. Yes. Um, you know, but again, also understanding that it is a different time in the business. Um, you know, you have to change with those times as yeah. well. But I, I do think that everyone can benefit from knowledge from everybody, you know, it, whether it's entertainment, pro wrestling, sports, you know, you name it. That's something like I, I feel like more wrestlers should try to get different like realms of entertainment in their lives. Mm -hmm. Like I know Bones has done acting classes and yeah. he fucking sings and all that mm -hmm. shit. Like I feel like if you're going to be inter an entertainer, like really go into entertainment. Right. Like sell like just sell out for entertainment. And like what you were saying about wrestlers, like you guys are a whole fucking different species, man. You guys are like hockey players, like. Who are just willing to fucking give up your body? Like you guys are sick fucks, honestly. I, yeah, I, wasn't I, I, I do say that, and that's where I say it takes a certain mental yeah. and physical aptitude to do what you do because you are willingly putting your body on the line every match yeah. for an entertainment perspective for for fans. And if you are trained correctly and know what to do, you'll be able to minimize injuries or, or things of that nature but on the other end we're also we're also actors too you know we're you uh, I forgot what you want to call the uh, type of acting where it's it's you know you're you're in a live setting there is no second take yeah in some places with the pandemic now where you're doing uh, you cinematic empty arena and, and cinematic stuff, yeah. stuff there is room for that but for the most part pro wrestling is is a one-shot deal yeah um, so you have to be ready on the button where I think we have advantage over a lot of actors is being able to fix things on the spot as it's happening. Um, a lot of comedic actors, and they know how to do a lot of that. But uh, it, it takes a special breed to do what we do and to really be a quote-unquote student of the game in the business and being able to learn every aspect. And I think uh, the younger generation would benefit more from pulling a lot of the veterans aside. Because um, I see a lot of it very often on shows where there's a lot of young talent on shows. And there's, there's some names that are on that have made something of themselves in the business, especially those that have been on TV, and they don't pick their brains. Yeah. Um, I'm a sponge. I love being able to, to get on shows. And, I, for example, I've had 40-minute locker room conversations with guys like Shane Douglas just about promos and trying to understand how he developed his promo style and his stories. And you look at today, I think Shane Douglas is still one of the most prolific talkers in the business. Um, being able to learn from those guys is has invaluable amounts of experience that can help anybody. For sure, that's that's really fucking good advice. All right, we go for the last one. Right for this main event. One, man. This is the hot ones. The last stab. Triple X. Ten out of ten on the heat index. Three oh. million Scoville. Triple X, just like the Gino Moore video. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's still selling. <laughs> You know, I'll put up all. I'll put over all that old school stuff all day long because it was such a different time and it was so much fun. Mike really fucking doing a lot of sauce on this one, so yeah, this I, I do see it a lot. So chunky. So uh, good luck. 
Thank you. Uh, this looks enjoys. pretty darn good. Yeah. Do we know what the health value in this are on these nuggets? None. Are they really chicken? We still haven't figured that out yet. After like 60 years of McDonald's business, we don't know if it's real or not. Oh well. Wow, that was way too much. Whoa. I'm still chewing. Bro, it's coming. There. Oh, it's coming. It's got kick. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. That was so Ooh. fucking much, man. Why did I choose to do that? Wow, this is... Okay, this is really starting to hit me right now. Wow. Fuck. This is almost like when you, when you have a really good edible, and you're not feeling anything, and it just kind of just creeps up on you. I've never had an edible, but I watched my roommate sit in the corner for one full hour asking us to call the ambulance because he thought he was floating away to space. <laughs> Meanwhile, he was... Oh, my God. All right. Uh, oh, Jesus. That's me when I watch a TJ Crawford match in the corner. I, I can't even laugh. This hurts. I float away into space because I'm just so incensed. I should have brought water. I kid, TJ. I do love you. I wanted to ask a personal question about your life. Uh, wow, can you actually get the words out? No. <laughs> it hurts so bad right now, Sean. Yeah, I know. I'm feeling it right now. I'm trying not to put it over, though. I'm no selling it. I'm, I'm not even trying to sell it. It hurts. And so I bad. sell everything. <laughs> I'm about to drink from this fountain right here. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <I'm crying. laughs> it's so bad. Are you a Christmas guy? Oh, yeah, I love Christmas. It's my favorite holiday of the year. Name your top five favorite Christmas movies. <laughs> Whoa, that's pretty That's pretty good. Um, okay. Uh, so let's start backwards. Uh, I would have to say number five would be Elf. Ooh. Um, number four would be any cheesy Fa-la-la-la Lifetime movie because they all have the same damn formula, <laughs> same psychology. It's the same movie every time except for the Colonel Sanders one coming out. Oh, Jesus, Lord in heaven, I just can't. I, I watched the video of that and just looking at Mario Lopez dressed up as uh, Colonel Sanders just, <laughs> it freaks me out. It just it just looks like it has... Are you uh, crying right now? Huh? I'm crying. Yeah, a little bit. I'm starting to tear up. Um, it, <laughs> it, just has, it just has Predator written all over it and not, and not what I'm talking about with uh, Jesse Ventura. Um, man, I don't, I guess we're going for the last nugget anyway, shit, yeah. screw my diet, today's cheat day, um, fuck. man, number three, I would have to say Christmassy time, but I would have to say Home Alone, oh yeah, number two is A Christmas Story, okay, because I absolutely love You're that, you an old I school could, guy, oh so yeah, that's and it. number one for me, hands down, National Lampoon's I, Christmas Vacation. I already knew that you were going to say that. I had it in Number my Number one. That movie, to me, Chevy Chase is so underrated as a damn comedic actor and his timing. That was, but that was my number one on your list before yep. you even said I already knew. I love that movie. I can recite lines from that movie. You know, it's going to be the hap, hap, happiest Christmas since uh, whoever tap danced with Danny fucking K. <laughs> Sean. Yes. This hurts so bad. I know it does. That's why you should be no-selling it. Right? I'm trying really hard. And again, that's you should have learned from having TJ on your show how to no-sell everything. If and I could... I'm, and, I'm, and I'm trying to even put him over. He's not even paying attention. <laughs> He's talking about his life and career back there. <laughs> uh, dude, uh, <laughs> this is the by far the worst sauce experience of my life. I'm never putting that much ever again. I watched... A recent episode of Hot Ones where they did that mistake, and I was like, "You're a bunch of pussies," because I've done this a couple times. Yeah, but of didn't now. you just film two episodes before me? So it doesn't you... matter. It doesn't matter. I'm fucking pussy right now. <laughs> this hurts so bad. I'm crying. I'm legit crying. I don't, oh. I'm crying like it's a wonderful life. Andrew Keller, do you realize that you just have someone that said he's a pussy and is a part of your team? Man, listen. If maybe, maybe when Andrew in, does this should, episode, it's gonna be fucking amazing. Well, maybe you should switch careers and go into auctions with Andrew. You don't have to worry about doing any hot sauce, right? Sean, it's always a fucking pleasure. <laughs> yes, sir. My mouth hurts so bad right now. Oh, I've never God. been in this amount of no. This was this was pain. good. This was a lot of fun. I I I want to go hotter. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> have you? Ever, I, apparently, I heard about this last night. There was a, a Jeff Cannonball 
match where they did a death match and a uh, fucking hot sauce ended up in Logan Black's eyes. Oh God. Would you do that death match? Yeah, I'll stick to grabbing a headlock and work at a universal <laughs> and go from call. there. Uh, um, is a great you call. know, uh, like you said, man, death match is not my style. Kudos to those guys. Yeah. It takes a certain level of um if you guys are hockey players inside. they're like oh yeah it's know. not and it's not to say that i would never never you know if the opportunity there were to, to do one um but not something i would do consistently because it's just not in my wheelhouse yeah um but to say that i've done one to enter you know bucket list piece would be great to do one but kudos to those guys man it's a special art form that those guys do and you know what they're able to accomplish in that is, yeah. is tremendous it's tremendous because it's again it's pro wrestling and it's entertainment and we're putting our bodies on the line for the entertainment of fans. So kudos to those guys. For sure. Absolutely. Sean, thanks for joining me, man. Thank you for having me. You went me. through the, the real hot pain with me today. That I know. Apparently it's emotional, too. Oh. It's burning your, your, your uh, soul. Man, I can't even rub my eyes right now. It's the worst part. I have tears. Like, I feel like Would my nose Would you like me to rub your eyes for you? Please don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, we got rid of COVID. You never know where my fingers have been. Yeah. I don't know, you know, I don't know where your fingers <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> is that how we're ending it? I'm that is how we're ending that episode. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. <laughs>